Shower bench seat construction begins with good framing. If the shower bench is framed incorrectly, it could lead to a water leak at the wall or at your shower glass or shower doors. So today, we're gonna to show you how to build a shower seat out of two by fours. And then in a later video, we'll show you how to waterproof it using the Weedy shower system, tile it, and add the quartz bench top. So make sure you stay tuned to this awesome video series that we're gonna be filming for you. It's gonna be phenomenal if you're redoing your shower or if you're doing a complete bathroom remodel. All right, we're gonna frame our bench first because uh, that's this bench is really gonna dictate the size of the shower pan. And we'll get into that a little bit later, but I'll explain why uh, it's important to kind of frame the bench first and then do your shower pan. Basically, we have just over yeah, 36 and a half inches from rough framing. And we're gonna do a solid top bench top. So we're getting a piece of quartz made for the bench. And just like any countertop, you wanna have an overhang. So we're gonna frame this bench so that when we tile everything, we have an overhang for the bench and the bench top will meet to the edge of our corner. So you wouldn't wanna just frame everything flush to this wall because then you would have an overhang sticking out. Some would say that looks just fine. <coughs> I, I personally think it would be nicer to have that that top bench top just stop at the edge of the wall. So what I did was I'm holding this back two inches for my framing because then we're going to be adding half inch uh, weedy board and then that will give us an inch and a half overhang on the countertop. Um, we'll, we'll actually have tile obviously too so the tile is going to be probably three eighths of an inch thick. So we'll have roughly about an inch to an inch and a, an eighth overhang on that bench top. So like I said we have 36 and a half and I'm making this about 34 oh, I do that. Oh, I'm sorry 36 and three quarter so we've got 34 and three quarter for the bench. Now we're going to be leaving this tile floor in place. Uh, we're not going to be doing doing the floors either so we're going to have to cut this tile to to meet up uh, with the new shower system. Basically, I'm just gonna mark where the edge of my rough in flaming is and then my weedy would just sit over top of the tile, 35 inches. I'm gonna give myself a little bit of wiggle room on it. So we'll go to 35 and an eighth. There's no reason to be completely tight to the framing on this. So we'll cut that. And then our shower pan is gonna be 48 inches. So we're going to have a 12 inch bench, that's basically the idea. So we're going to cut this at 12 inches. So we're going to cut this and then we'll cut this tile once we get figure out exactly where we want uh, our shower base meeting up with the bench. So what I have to cut this with is I'm going to use a wet sponge so that the dust isn't terrible and I do have a respirator that I'm going to be wearing. Uh, this is actually just a, it's kind of nice, it's called a Sunstrom. Uh, respirator. It's kind of small and it's nice. It just uh, it's easy to, to have hanging on you. But I'm going to be using this fine uh, grinder and uh, I really like these blades. These are Montelitz um, CGX 115. This is a four and a half inch grinder wheel. Uh, but I really like how it cuts because it has all these diamonds kind of like on the edges of the tile um, or on, on the edges of the uh, the rim. So I don't know, I just find it to have a really nice cut, uh, especially on porcelain tile. So we're gonna go ahead and I'll just wet my sponge. As you can see, this angle grinder and the CGX115 diamond blade do a great job cutting through the existing tile. Now I will say this, Steve is a professional, so be very safe if you're doing a similar type of cutting job. And also we'll put the links to the CGX115 and our angle grinder down in the description here on YouTube. So if you're interested in those, you can check them out there. So now as you can see, I overcut this. You don't have to be too accurate um, because I'm gonna have the weedy board overhanging it and then I'm gonna have tile, so we have plenty of room. So there's no reason to be 100% accurate on it. So you can see how easy that came up.
sticks. So you can see I have plenty of wiggle room here, so I'm not really worried about it being completely tight against there. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and frame the wall. Just basically like a mini wall for the for the bench. Uh, and what I most common size benches, like if you were to buy, like Weedy makes a bench that you can as a kit to put in, um, and so do many other manufacturers, and they're normally about 20 inches uh, tall before tile. Normally, I think anywhere between after finished height, anywhere between 20 and 26 inches is about where a normal bench height is. So I'm going to make my rough framing level out at 20 inches, and then we're going to have a quartz top that'll be an inch and a half. Um, and we'll also have the uh, weedy board on top that we'll be putting on there. So our max, our total height of this bench will be 22 inches. And that's typically a normal, normal height. So we'll just go frame this like as if you were to frame a wall. Uh, you can use screws obviously. I'm just going to use my nail gun. Every, about every 12 inches is good enough. level Let's see what our subfloor looks like and we look like we're almost a good eighth inch off of level and the way that this has this uh it's in between studs here i'm actually just going to get a piece of blocking in between my studs here to anchor this to and then i'm also going to put a ledger board so that i can have my weedy screw into something along this edge so we'll cut a 14 and a half inch piece there and then we'll run another piece down you want to make sure the pan will fit in here so we got 48 inches for our pan size so you just want to make sure that stays consistent to where you put this but to level this out, I'm actually just going to shim up my, like, basically like shimming up a wall. You want to make sure that this is obviously level. You don't want to have water running towards your shower door where you want it to be. You want to make sure you have it level before you nail it. Make sure this sits level. Got a piece of blocking behind here as well. Okay, so I'm just putting this little ledger block so I have something for my back board screw into. block in between here, about seven inches. Okay, so for the bench top, I would recommend just gluing the top of this plywood down. And I'm using three quarter inch plywood for this. Uh, you're better off to go with three quarter. I mean, half inch could span this little area, but uh, obviously the sturdiness of the plywood uh, will ensure that you're getting a, you know a nice solid top. And I always. I like to screw these in. You can nail them as well. 
but I like to make sure that everything is well fastened here. And we're just using two inch galvanized screws on this. This is what the shower bench looked like when we finished it. Uh, this is right after we installed the Weedy Fundo Primo shower pan too. What are your thoughts? Would you like a shower bench or not? Let us know down in the comments. Now in our next video, we're gonna share with you how to install the Weedy Fundo Primo curved shower pan step-by-step. -step. We'll put that video right here. If you missed our prior video, which was Steve tearing out the one-piece fiberglass shower surround, you can watch that video right here. And then finally, if you are doing a complete bathroom remodel and you want access to all of our videos and one-on-one -on -one support, you can watch those videos and join Bathroom Repair Tutor right here and that's a phenomenal course if you are doing a complete bathroom remodel. Thanks for watching this video. We really appreciate it and we'll see you in the next one.